Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to discuss a very important topic of interest which in uh, complete denture that is anatomic landmarks of maxilla. So, it is also important in both the uh, uh, lecture as well as the, that is the uh, theory as well as the practical part. And I will try to teach it in an easy way to remember the anatomic landmarks of maxilla. So, let's start. Let's begin with the introduction. A thorough understanding of the anatomic and denture landmarks in relation to denture foundation is important for the following reasons. That is, selective placement of forces as determined by the stress bearing potential of the anatomic structures, maximum coverage of denture without interfering with the health or function of the tissues, long term success of the complete denture. Okay, the anatomic landmarks of significance in relation to maxillary and mandibular complete denture impressions can be discussed as mucous membrane, supporting areas, limiting areas, stress bearing areas and relief areas. So, these are the important topics in relation to the anatomic landmarks of maxilla and mandibular. Okay. So, in this picture, it shows the residual ridge which is extremely knife edged. Okay, this is the residual ridge and it is extremely knife edged. And in this patient, posterior nasal spine which extends posteriorly as far as the hamular notch. So, hamular notch is B. So, here is the uh, posterior nasal spine. Okay, and the ridge has almost resolved to the zygomatic process. And the hamular is D which is medial and posterior to the notch. So, that is the uh, this picture. Okay. So, first one is the mucous membrane. It covers or lines the oral cavity including residual alveolar ridges and act as an intervening cushioning material between the residual ridges and denture. It composes of mucosa and submucosa. Mucosa is classified as masticatory, specialized and lining mucosa. So, there are three types of mucosa that is masticatory mucosa, specialized mucosa and lining mucosa. So, in this picture, it shows the mucosa. Okay. Masticatory mucosa, lining mucosa and specialized mucosa. Specialized mucosa, it covers the dorsal surface of tongue and which is keratinized. Lining mucosa is non-keratinized. It covers the lips, cheeks, soft palate, ventral surface of tongue and slopes of the residual ridges. Mucosa covering the hard palate and the rest of residual ridges termed as masticatory mucosa. And it is formed by keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and thin layer of connective tissue called lamina propria. Keratinization which is decreases in the denture virus. So, uh, for improving keratinization, uh, we are all advised the patients to remove the denture such night and massaging which improves the keratinization. Okay. So, there are two, three types of mucosa that, that is specialized mucosa masticatory mucosa and lining mucosa. Okay. And this is the residual alveolar ridge maxilla and this is the mandible. Okay. Submucosa which is formed by connective tissue and it makes up the bulk of the mucous membrane. So, submucosa, this is the submucosa and it is formed by various connective tissue. Okay. And it makes the bulk of the mucous membrane. And it varies in thickness and character from dense to loose areola connective tissue. Okay, coming to the landmarks of anatomic landmarks of maxilla. First one is supporting and limiting structures in maxilla. Which are the supporting structures and which are the limiting structures? So the supporting structures are hard palate. Rugae, residual alveolar ridge, and maxillary tuberosity. Okay, so which is the uh, hard palate? So this one. Here it is the hard palate. Okay, hard palate. Then this is the rugae. Okay, so here in this picture it shows here it is the hard palate. Then this is the rugae. Then this is the residual alveolar ridge, this green part. Okay. 
This is the residual alveolar ridge. Here, this is the residual alveolar ridge. Okay. Then, this part. This is the maxillary tuberosity. This blue, blue part, it is the maxillary tuberosity. So, these are the various supporting structures. So, uh, which are the supporting structures? Heart palate, rugae, residual alveolar ridge, and maxillary tuberosity. And which are the limiting structures? Limiting structures are labial frenum. Here, it is the labial frenum. Okay, this E, this brown color, which is the labial frenum. Then the labial vestibule is there here. Okay, bilaterally, there is the labial vestibule. Okay, this is the labial vestibule. And here it is the buccal frenum. Okay, here it is the buccal frenum. Okay, then here it is the buccal vestibule. Which is the buccal vestibule? Here, this one is the buccal vestibule. This, this marked area. Okay, this marked area is the buccal vestibule. And this is the hamular notch. Where is the hamular notch? Here it is the hamular notch. Okay. This one is the hamular notch. Then this one is the fovea palatine. Here it is the fovea palatine. And final one is posterior palatal seal area. Okay, this one is the posterior palatal seal area. So, these are the limiting structures. So, which are the limiting structures? Label frenum, label vestibule. So, label frenum, label vestibule, then buccal frenum. Okay, buccal frenum, then buccal vestibule. Then the hamular notch. This one is the hamular notch. Here it is the hamular notch. This K. Okay. Hamular notch. Then this is the fovea palatine. These are the fovea palatine. And final one is posterior palatal seal area. So these are the limiting structures of maxillary arch. Okay. So in this picture, we have learned the supporting structures and limiting structures in maxilla. Okay. The next is the relief areas. Which are the relief areas? Mid palatine suture. This is the mid palatine suture. Okay. Mid palatine suture. Then the incisive papilla. Okay. Where is the incisive papilla? Here it is the incisive papilla. Incisive papilla. And the final one is tori palatinus. These are the Relief areas. Taurus is not seen here because it is a uh, pathology. Okay. So, uh, normal anatomic landmarks are this one. So, supporting structures, limiting structures and relief areas are already learnt in this diagram. Okay. So, first one is the line diagram and second one is the model. Okay. So, coming to the stress bearing areas in maxilla. So, which are the stress bearing areas? That is primary and secondary are there. So, the primary stress bearing areas are heart palate. Okay. That is the horizontal slopes of heart palate. This is the uh, uh, horizontal slopes of heart palate. This shaded area. Okay. This is the primary stress bearing area. Okay. And, uh, it's, and also there is posterior lateral slopes of Residual alveolar ridge. So, this posterior uh, posterior lateral slopes of residual alveolar ridge and the horizontal slopes of heart palate are the primary stress bearing areas in maxilla. And which are the secondary stress bearing areas? This rugae. This rugae and the maxillary tuberosity or alveolar tubercle. These are the secondary stress bearing areas. Primary are Horizontal slopes of heart palate and uh, posterior lateral slopes of residual alveolar ridge. Then the secondary are rugae and maxillary tuberosity. Okay. 
so so this is the picture showing upper medial labial frenum or frenulum it is a fold of mucous membrane that overlies dense connective tissue so this is the picture of labial frenum here it is the this uh, we can note the palatin rugae here it is the palatin rugae here it is the incisive papilla this is the incisive papilla and this is the toroid palatinus okay so rugae incisive papilla and toroid palatinus of which incisive papilla toroid palatinus are relief areas and what is this rugae rugae is the supporting structure okay and this is the picture showing incisive papilla here it is the incisive papilla here it is the maxillary tuberosity okay bilaterally maxillary tuberosity and here it is bilaterally hamular notch and here it is the uh, what is incisive papilla it is a relief area okay incisive papilla is a relief area what is maxillary tuberosity tuberosity is a supporting structure tuberosity is a supporting structure and what is this hamular notch hamular notch is a limiting structure okay and this picture here it is a hamular notch this hamular notch is lying between the maxillary tuberosity and the hamulus okay and hamular notch is a groove this notch is a key clinical landmark in the maxillary denture construction because the maximum posterior extent of the denture is the vibrating line which runs bilaterally through the hamular notches okay okay then this picture shows the vibrating line okay here it is a vibrating line it is a very important feature to be located in the construction of maxillary cavity denture because it is considered as the junction between hard and soft palates and it is important because it is the maximum posterior limit to the maxillary denture so this vibrating line is the maximum posterior limit to the maxillary denture okay and this picture it shows the posterior palatal seal area this shaded area is the posterior palatal seal area it is very important in maxillary cavity denture fabrication it must be identified and evaluated it is the area of compressible tissue located lateral to the midline and in the posterior third of the hard palate so this the extent of this area is the vibrating line while the anterior border is indistinct okay so this is the posterior palatal seal area okay and this picture it shows the hard palate what is hard palate it is made up of two maxilla and the palate bone and it is very keratinized throughout the hard palate posterior laterally it contains submucosa contains glandular tissue and the horizontal portion lateral to the midline provides primary support as it also undergoes least resorption so it undergoes least resorption okay in this picture it shows rugae here it is the which one is the rugae rugae then the residual alveolar ridge and the maxillary tuberosity what are rugae these are the raised areas of dense connective tissue present in the anterior one third of the palate at an angle to the residual ridge this is the rugae okay it provides the secondary support to the maxillary denture as it dresses the anterior plate displacement of the denture short it should not be distorted during the impression making okay what is residual ridge this is the residual ridge and it is a portion of residual bone and soft tissue covering that remain after the removal of teeth what is maxillary tuberosity it is a bulbous extension of residual ridge in the second and third molar region posterior part of the tuberosity rarely resorbs and therefore it is the most important area which provide support to the maxillary denture so rugae residual ridge 
and the maxillary tuberosity. Rugae, residual ridge and the maxillary tuberosity. Okay. This is the intraoral picture and this is the model. Okay. And in this picture, it shows the limiting structures that is label frenum, label vestibule, buccal frenum, buccal vestibule. And it is the intraoral picture and it is the model. Okay. So, here it is the labial frenum. Okay. It is a fold of mucous membrane present in the midline which extends from labial aspect of residual ridge to the lip. It contains no muscle or action of its own and it can be excised if attached close to the ridge script. So, here the lay in the it, there is no muscle which is attached to the labial frenum. This is very important for the viva examination. Okay. And for the also practical viva. Okay. And uh, mm, this is the labial vestibule. Here, the portion of oral cavity which is bounded on one side by the teeth, gingiva and alveolar ridge, on the other by the lips, anterior to the buccal frame. Okay. So, here the muscle of main, uh, this is the buccal frenum. This is the labial vestibule. Here, this uh, black part. Okay. This is the labial vestibule. Here, main muscle of lip, that is orbicularis oris, which forms the outer surface of the labial vestibule. Here it is orbicularis oris, which forms the outer surface of labial vestibule. Its tone depends on support given by the labial danger flange and position of teeth. And the fibers run horizontally it has an indirect effect on the impression extension at the denture base. Okay. Then this is the buccal frenum. It separates labial and buccal vestibule and it overlies the levator angular oris muscle. Okay. Here it overlies the levator angular oris. This is the buccal frenum. And uh, it sucks also uh, varies in configuration from single or double fold to broad and fan shaped. Okay. Orbicularis oris which pulls the frenum in a forward direction while buccinator pulls it in a backward direction. So orbicularis oris muscle it pulls the frenum in a forward direction and buccinator which pulls the frenum in a backward direction. Okay. Then the next one is the buccal vestibule. Here it extends from the buccal frenum to the hamular notch and houses the buccal flange of the denture. Its mucosa is a liny mucosa similar to that of labial vestibule. Its size varies with contraction of vaccinator, position of mandible, amount of bone lost from maxillary. So these are the uh, labial frenum, labial vestibule, buccal frenum and buccal vestibule. Here, the picture shows hamular notch in a model and it is in an intraoral. Okay. So, what is this hamular notch? It is a depression present between the maxillary tuberosity and the tergoid hamulus. Okay. Maxillary tuberosity and the tergoid hamulus. And it is the distal termination of the denture. So, here it is the distal uh, termination of the denture. Okay. And the denture should never extend onto the ham tergoid hamulus as it is sharp and contains thin mucous membrane. The tergomandibular ligament which is attached to the hamulus and provision must be made for its movement. So it is in a model and here it is intraoral picture showing the hamular notch. Coming to the fovea palatine. It is in a model, it is in a oral picture. So, here it is the fovea palatine. What is this fovea palatine? These are two ductal openings onto which the duct of other palatal mucous glands open. And they are post, uh, po present posteriorly in the heart palate on either side of the midline. Okay. But it is not a constant finding in all individuals. And they serve no specific function but Used as a guide in identifying the posterior extent of a denture. The denture should extend 1 to 2 mm beyond the fovea. And last, posterior palatal 
seal. It is in a model. Here it is the posterior palatal seal area. Here it is an intraoral. And what is posterior palatal seal area? It is the area between the anterior and posterior vibrating line. And it is defined as the soft tissue which along the junction of hard and soft palates on which pressure within the physiologic limits can be applied by the complete mumble dental prosthesis to aid in retention of the denture. And it is simply, simply, it is defined as the area between anterior and posterior vibrating line. So this is the posterior vibrating line here and it is the anterior vibrating line and this is the area between the posterior and anterior vibrating line. And this is the posterior palatal seal area. Okay. Okay. And this picture shows the relief areas in maxilla. That is mid palatal suture and the incisive papilla. This is the incisive papilla. And this is the picture showing the mid palatal raphe or medium palatal suture. Okay. This mid palatine suture, the submucal which underlying this suture is very thin, making the overlying mucosa non resilient. During intraoral examination, this area should be palpated to determine any tenderness. Okay. It may then be relieved during impression making. Okay. Then this one is the incisive papilla. Here, the submucosa covering this papilla contains nasopalatine vessels. So, here. It contains the nasopalatine vessels. It gives an indication of amount of resorption as it comes to lie near the crust as resorption progresses. It may then need it to be relieved to avoid pressure on the nerve and vessels. So, it must be relieved. Okay. During impression making. So, this is mid-palatine suture and this is the incisive papilla. So, these structures should be relieved before impression making. Okay, that is all about the anatomy landmarks of maxilla. And uh, here, the landmarks which is corresponding to the uh, to the denture. So, maxillary denture which shows the corresponding landmarks of the, uh, in the intraoral landmarks. Okay, so here it is the labial frena which is corresponds, but here the labial frena is not visible. So, labial frena is corresponds to labial notch in the denture. This is the labial notch. This one is the label flange. That is the, this one is the label flange in denture. That is labial vestibule intraorally. Okay. Then this is the buccal frena. Here it is the buccal frena. Buccal frena. Buccal frena is uh, corresponds to buccal notch. Then buccal vestibule is corresponds to buccal flange. So, label notch, label flange, buccal notch, buccal flange. Okay. Then, the fifth one, that is coronoid bulge. In rawerally, it is known as coronoid bulge. And in danger, it is known as coronoid contour. What is that? Coronoid contour. Then, this one is the alveolar ridge, residual alveolar ridge. Okay. And in danger, it is known as alveolar groove. Okay. Then maxillary tuberosity and uh, in the danger it is known as area of tuberosity. Okay. Then the hamular notch and in danger it is known as tergo maxillary seal in area of hamular notch. Okay. Then posterior palatal seal region it is known as the area of posterior palatal seal. Okay. Then tenth one, it is fovea palatinae. It is also known as uh, fovea palatinae in danger itself. Danger two. Okay. Then the median palatine raphe. Here it is the median palatine raphe, but in the danger it is known as median palatine groove. Then the uh, in this here. This incisive papilla, 
Okay. Here it is known as incisive fossa. Then this one is the rugi. Here it is also known as rugi. Okay. And uh, then next one is the, um, this is the displaceable soft and hard palate. This 14th one. Okay. But here it is known as butterfly outline of posterior palatal seal. So these are the corresponding landmarks of in maxillary denture. That's about the anatomic landmarks of maxilla. Now try to answer the questions below. That is primary thrust bearing areas, secondary thrust bearing areas, supporting structures, relief areas. Then try to label the parts of anatomic landmarks intraorally. Okay. Please put your answers in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. If you like the video, please like and share the videos to your friends. Thank you.